Hello, hello! Welcome to the first episode of Prehistory in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders, both of which come from our sister channel, History in the Dark. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Some Dude 267, Brightline Blue, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hoth 444, Arthur Roy Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune 131 232, Mr. Black Rose Tribal Typhoon, and Dark Lightning 1536. You are the reason why this content remains! Prehistoric, which is a good place to start, I think, with this channel. And today, we're gonna start things off on my new, exciting channel, Prehistory in the Dark, which obviously covers things that are prehistoric. I didn't feel that this topic could really blend well with what I do over on the History in the Dark channel, so I thought I'd start a new channel that focuses on prehistory, things before man, mainly dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs, just as much as I love trains, and here we are talking about dinosaurs, but for our first top 5 countdown, let's discuss dinosaurs that might be relatively safe to be around. After all, I think, if anything, fiction, such as Jurassic Park has taught us, that perhaps being close to large creatures like dinosaurs might be eh, relatively dangerous, but the fossil record shows us that dinosaurs were vast and varied when it comes to what type of creatures they were. They weren't all giant predators looking to eat you. There might be some dinosaurs that, dare I say, might have been safe to pet. Wouldn't you like to pet a dinosaur? I would love to pet a dinosaur. So follow me if you will, let's pretend we have a time machine. And we're going back to the periods where dinosaurs roam the planet. Not birds. I mean, if you want to pet a dinosaur, go pet a bird. That, that, that is actually the best way to do it now. But if we want to pet an actual prehistoric dinosaur, obviously we need a time machine, or cloning technology. But there's a zoom time machine, and the professor, who has sent you back specifically to pet prehistoric creatures for some reason, has given you a list of creatures he believes it would be safe to do this thing to. Here's five dinosaurs it's probably safe to pet. I stress, probably... Because behavior is something that's difficult to judge from the fossil record. It's hard to tell how the animals would have behaved without actually seeing them actually behaving. So, you know, I could be wrong. But based on scientific knowledge as of now, this is the five that I think would be the safest to do that with. Brachiosaurus altatorex. This is a rather famous dinosaur, and if you've seen Jurassic Park, you're probably familiar with brachies. They're actually one of my favorites, and they're probably one of the most well-known sauropods out there, right up there with Apatosaurus and Diplodocus. Brachiosaurus, as well as other sauropods, are among the largest land-based creatures to ever walk the planet. The size estimates on it vary because of the limited fossils that paleontologists have managed to get a hold of, but the largest estimate puts them at about 35 metric tons and they would have been taller than most people's houses. They were likely herd animals, and they are herbivores. Their neck posture has been debated a bit, but it is believed that they held their necks somewhat upright, implying that they probably ate from the tops of most trees in the area, not closer to the ground like Diplodocus or Apatosaurus would have. But you're probably wondering, wait, this thing is huge, how can we possibly give it a pet? Well, to begin with, we have to remember, in our time machine scenario, the dinosaurs don't know what we are. We'd be a completely alien species to them. And it's true that given the size of Brachiosaurus, they would be large enough to crush us. But the thing is, they're so big that it's debatable how much they'd even really pay us any mind. As far as they were concerned, we wouldn't really be much of a threat to them at all. And even if they were a little wary of us, they're rather slow, so we'd probably be able to get away in time before they tried to step on us if we were careful. That's assuming we wanted to give them a firm pat on the leg. But, like in Jurassic Park, it might be more interesting to climb to the top of a tree and perhaps pet them that way. Again, if we weren't really displaying any kind of threat to them, they might just not pay us any mind. Carrying on with their day of eating leaves and chewing and eating more leaves and chewing, that's pretty much all they did. So I think it's safe to say that for the most part, as long as we're careful, we can assume that Brachiosaurus would be safe to pet. <laughs> Compsognathus longdipes. And I know what some of you Jurassic Park fans are thinking. Wait, that's way too dangerous. Copies are vicious packs of horrible hunters and they'll rip you apart. 
Well, there's no evidence in the fossil record for that particular behavior. Although in the original novel it's mentioned that the pro-compsognathus, which is actually an entirely different species, apparently have a venomous bite. Compsognathus is, fun fact, not actually related to pro-compsognathus at all. Besides both being dinosaurs, they lived in the late Jurassic period like Brachiosaurus, although they inhabited what is now Europe, whereas Brachiosaurus was in America. Now they have sharp teeth, so it's presumed that they're meat eaters, but they are tiny little things. Having them might be a bit risky, but so long as they weren't in a group like in Jurassic Park, they'd probably be safe to pet if you could earn their trust. Think of them as like tiny chihuahuas or something. And even if they did get mad at us, it's unlikely they were venomous, and they probably couldn't do any severe damage to us. So, you know, people are willing to want to pet a lion nowadays. So I think it's fair to say that, relatively speaking, compies would be safe to pet. Alberta Dromius Syntarsus. This little guy was actually a fairly recent discovery up in, well, Alberta, Canada. They live in the late Cretaceous period. They're plant eaters, and they're short little guys, barely coming up to the knee on the average human. They were fairly long though, longer than five feet, but still, herbivore, short, I doubt they were super dangerous, especially if they were alone. The big issue I think when it comes to petting these guys would be, well, how do you get near them? Since we're bigger than them, it's likely they'd see us as a threat just because of that, and run. So you'd have to do a lot of work to get close, and earn their trust to a certain degree. So I think it's worth saying that the smallest plant-eating dinosaur that is known from Canada is probably safe to pet. <coughs> Epidexyteryx. This one's an interesting one because it is one of the smallest dinosaurs I ever did see. Definitely looking much more like a modern bird than a dinosaur. But they lived in the middle of the Jurassic period in what is now China. They actually represent the earliest known example of ornamental feathers in the fossil record. It's worth mentioning they do have sharp teeth, but they're so small that I can't imagine they'd do any significant harm as long as one exercised proper caution. Though in the same line as Alberta Dromius, these things were probably very fast, especially given their size. They would almost have to be. So it isn't a matter of it being unsafe to pet it, it's more getting a hold of it in the first place to do it. Just let us love you, tiny prehistoric bird. That's all we want. <coughs> Protoceratops. Aha! I wanted to put a ceratopsian on this list somewhere, and Protoceratops really seems like the safest option. It doesn't have gigantic, deadly horns sticking out of its face, for one. And, for a ceratops, they're actually not that big. They're about the size of a large dog, which puts them in the same vein as a big old doggo. Give them a pet on the nose, maybe a treat or two, and they'll be perfectly happy. Assuming you can get close, because I think the biggest danger with them is that they probably moved in herds. And while getting one to trust you and not be territorial about it might not be super hard, getting an entire herd to do so is an entirely different story. But if it's one-on-one, -on -one, I don't think it'd be that difficult, assuming their temperament is rather chill. Though that being said, their main predators were Velociraptor mongoliensis, so they do know how to acknowledge and defend themselves from danger. They may not have horns, but that beak mouth might do some damage. But still, we pet modern dogs, and they have teeth, so it's not like it's any more risky in this regard. They live in the late Cretaceous in Mongolia, and if you ever get the opportunity, I do think it's safe to say that they'd be relatively safe to pet. This channel is not responsible for any deaths, maiming, or killing that may result from trying to pet dinosaurs. You have been warned. Thank you. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.